Well, in morgues across Michigan, bodies are laying unclaimed with no family to bury them for weeks, even months. It's happening more and more, and it's costing taxpayers thousands. Tonight, Target 8 investigator Ken Kolker tells us the story of those who die alone and unclaimed in West Michigan through the death and life of one forgotten man. Death certificates usually tell a story, or at least provide an outline of how the dead lived. Ronald Dittmar's story ended in his home in Kentwood. He was 66 and alone. With no close family and few people who called him friend, his body went unclaimed, his story untold. You wonder, you know, what, what he experienced during his life. For 30 days, Ronald Dittmar's body lay in a zippered white body bag in the morgue at Blodgett Hospital on a stainless steel tray in a stainless steel cooler kept at 34 degrees. Mr. Dittmar resided on that second tray. In Kent County, Dittmar's body was among a total of 50 left unclaimed and eventually buried at state expense the last two years. That's an increase from previous years. Officials say it's a problem that cost taxpayers thousands. In Detroit, the issue made headlines last year. 100 bodies a year go unclaimed there. At one point last year, 67 unclaimed bodies lay stacked in that city's morgue. It is really sad, and uh, you know, it seems like it's unfortunate when our time comes that we wouldn't have someone to help us and uh, be there with us. In Kalamazoo County, they're seeing six to eight unclaimed bodies a year. Several years ago, that rarely happened. Some blame the economy. Often, the unclaimed were also unclaimed in life. Some by their own choice, estranged from family, homeless men and women living on the streets and sleeping in shelters or under highway bridges. Some were military veterans. I think it's a direct reflection of the economic times and the hardships that people are beginning to uh, experience. This is the final hardship? This is the final hardship. In some cases, families refuse to claim a relative because they can't afford the funeral. The state will pay poor families up to $700 for what used to be known as a pauper's burial. But some families don't want to hassle with the paperwork. Perhaps if there are family members, uh, may be afraid to step forward and identify themselves and take responsibility because they think they're going to be saddled with uh, you know, expenses uh, that they, uh, uh, for the funeral that they don't have. The state paid to bury more than 12,500 indigent people last year, a jump of 72% over the year before. That cost taxpayers more than $4.6 million. In Kent County, 590 indigent barrows last year at a cost of nearly 200000 The state doesn't track how many of those indigent burials were for unclaimed bodies, such as the case of Ronald Dittmar, who died in his Kentwood home in early January. The medical examiner worked with police to look for next of kin, anybody who cared, anybody who could give them a proper burial. They found nobody. In fact, the only photograph anybody has seen of Ronald Dittmar is on his driver's license, and police haven't released that. As you can see, it's David Germain, a mortician at Pedersen Funeral Home in Rockford, helped prepare Dittmar's body. His birthplace unknown, his education unknown, his ancestry unknown. Occupation unknown, the type of business or industry unknown, his marital status unknown. And then here's the really sad part, his father's name unknown, his mother's name unknown. About all that was known at the time of his burial was how he died, of chronic alcohol abuse, years of drinking. But since he was buried on February 15th at the Rockford Cemetery, we have learned much more about Ronald Dittmar. How would I describe him? Uh, a kind, a kind, wanted to help people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he did. You know, he was helpful, you, you know. And like I say, he come over and help me, you know. And after the break, something else we've learned raises a question. Is Ronald Dittmar's body resting where it belongs? Unclaimed bodies, more than 50 in the last two years in Kent County alone, sometimes stored in a stainless steel cooler for up to 90 days before they are buried. Target 8's Ken Culker picks up the story of one of the unclaimed, Ronald Dittmar. He was a creature of habit. Whenever it snowed, he'd get the car cleaned off. 
Warren Jackson hadn't seen his neighbor Ronald Dedmar for several days. He grew suspicious on January 13th after noticing his Mercury marquee in the driveway covered with snow. He called Kentwood police, who kicked in the back door and discovered Dittmar's body on the floor near the kitchen, next to his favorite overstuffed chair. And that's where um, he spent probably 80% of his day was in that chair watching TV. His death certificate shows he lay there dead for perhaps a week. Police learned little about Ronald Dittmar, found nobody to claim his body. If you don't have family and you don't ever marry, don't have kids, uh, who's going to claim you? There is no one. Target 8 filled in some of the blanks. He was born in Kent County, according to the county clerk's office. Parents' names, William and Evelyn Dittmar. Ancestry, Dutch. Both his parents were listed as Dutch on their death certificates. <laughs> Neighbors say his father was his best friend. Whenever Ron talked about anything in his past, it was, me and my dad did this, me and my dad did that, me and my dad went fishing, we had a cabin. Directories at the Grand Rapids Public Library help fill in more blanks. He and his parents moved to the home in Kentwood around 1973, when he was about 30. His father worked on the assembly line at White Consolidated, the old Calvinator refrigerator plant on Clyde Park Avenue. And so did Ronald Dittmar. He worked on the second floor of the 40-some acre factory, a co-worker recalls, in the range division, assembling 15 oven doors an hour. He was a real easy guy to move from one department to another because he was versatile. Dittmar was among more than 400 people who lost their jobs when the plant closed in 1987. Ronald Dittmar's parents died in November 1997 of medical complications. They were both 79. They died within five days of each other. Ronald was their only child. When his mom and dad both died within a couple days, that just tore him up. He stayed in the house but had recently stopped taking long walks after blood clots in his legs made it painful to get around. He kept his neighbor company when she held garage sales. We talked about the Lord a lot and we talked about prophecy because he watched a lot of ministers on television. By last fall, Ronald Dittmar was speaking of death. He lived off a of canned soup and he was just waiting for his time. He was just waiting to die. He came, Mrs. Mooney, I've been asking, I've asked the Lord to take me. And I said, Ron, now you stop that. Medical examiners say it's difficult to find a funeral home willing to bury the unclaimed. The state pays only $465. Pedersen Funeral Home in Rockford has stepped in, picking up unwanted bodies from the morgue and burying them, either at Oak Hill Cemetery in Grand Rapids or at the Rockford Cemetery. These people have lived a life and certainly uh, are entitled to a, a, a dignified burial, at least as much as we can provide. Ronald Dittmar's service was a simple affair. He was too large for the typical $400 particle board box, so they placed him in an $1,100 20-gauge steel casket for the trip to Rockford Cemetery. We're the procession for this guy. And we're the only vehicle following this hearse. Four men who didn't know him were his pallbearers. The cemetery caretaker, a man from the vault company, and two men from the funeral home. It lasted all of five minutes. No friends, no relatives, no final words, except the cemetery caretaker's instructions. But this is not where Ronald Dittmar belongs. What we've since learned is that his parents are buried side by side, 25 miles away at the Georgetown Township Cemetery. The family bought three plots in 1967, one for dad, one for mom, and one just to the left of mom for their only son. A county attorney tells Target 8 he has tracked down Ronald Dittmar's uncle in Florida who must decide whether to exhume the body, reuniting him with his parents, and of course, if there's enough in his estate to pay for it.